Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sterling. I work with Jamile. We wanted to thank you all for joining in on this Hangout, for submitting questions, uh, for taking advantage of this really cool new technology. And uh, we're hoping this is going to be a series of things this week with weeks. Um, so continue to check back into Jamile's page for different updates uh, as we go through the season. Uh, obviously, you know, we'll get to the man of the hour, but if I could have you guys go through and introduce yourselves just to get started, I'd appreciate it. So why don't we start with uh, Andy, and then we'll go through the line. I'm Andy Hunt. I'm coming to you live from the Twin Cities. Hey, uh, I'm Graham. I'm uh, coming from Washington, D.C. My name is uh, Justin Gregory, and I'm coming from Denver, Colorado. Hey, everybody. I'm Kyle down in Hotlanta. <laughs> so, uh, Jamile, we had a lot of people submit questions online um, and started off, uh, Eric wants to know about the clubhouse atmosphere and if there are any great characters on the teams. Do you pull any pranks on each other? Things like that. Uh, to answer Eric's question, uh, the atmosphere is good. We got a we got a youthful team this year, and um, it, it's it's just a lot of fun because a lot of guys that difference in music, and we got a lot of different music playing. So one guy's shutting one guy's iPad down, putting the other guys on, and uh, they know I like the hip hop, so they know when I'm in there, which iPod or which iPad is on the uh, on the hook. But uh, I'd say the biggest character is uh, between Josh Reddick and. I don't know. We got a good mix, man. Johnny Gomes is a guy. Uh, Brian Fuentes is a guy. So we just have a good time in there. It's a nice atmosphere. Uh, Andy, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah. Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming from the Twin Cities, but I'm originally from Seattle. So I'm a big M's fan. Um, but I just wanted to know, uh, after recently traveling to Japan to open the season against my M's, uh, what other countries uh, would you like to visit most? Uh, I've always wanted to go to, uh, Europe is one, uh, uh, I've always wanted to go to Africa as another place I would like to go. Uh, I've been to Cuba, um, when I was in college, uh, part of the USA baseball team. And, uh, so that was, that was an experience in its own. But, uh, yeah, it's been good, man. And, you know, hopefully we can get on your M's this weekend when we go yep. in there. But, uh, that's good that you're a good supporter fan, so. We'll see what we can do when we get out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pride. Good luck to you. <laughs> I know we've kind of had your number so far. Uh, I've been lining out. We'll get <laughs> How has the season start been so far? I mean, obviously, it came up midway through the year last year, so has it been cool to kind of get experience opening day with the team and everything like that? Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, I've been enjoying it the whole time. I'm a little, I'm not too cool with the weather changing, you know, with the cold nights and the windy nights going on so far. But other than that, I'm enjoying it. You know, this is why we play to compete and come out here and, and challenge against the best. And uh, we've been having some good battles out there, and I, I'm, I'm excited for the season. If I could just follow up really quick, too. Uh, what was it like just adjusting to the time zones and everything like that? That was, that was probably the roughest part for me. I never, from the week that we were there, I never really got back to feeling like, you know, I, like I was adjusted to the time zone. So when I got back home, it was easier for me to adjust to getting back to our time zone yeah. than it was for me to even feel any type of normality back in uh, Tokyo. Yeah, because that's like 11 hours, right? So it's just like flipped on its head. Yeah, the flight was 12 hours. The uh, time change was 16. Oh, 16 oh. Hours. Yeah, yeah. I want to say so. It was it was still night and day. So, right. Yeah, we had to make do. Cool. Jamil, oh, I we had a. Oh, go ahead. I think we're all sports fans or played at some point in our lives here. Could you talk a little bit about superstitions that you have that have kind of carried through your career? Uh, for me, I'm not too superstitious, but uh, I'm a big music guy, and uh, before every game. You know, that's what gets me motivated and gets me going, gets my mind off of everything outside of baseball. Because as you know, you know, we have regular lives like everybody else. And, uh, you know, stuff can get to the point to where you want to get your mind off everything. And I pick a few songs or, or whatever it is I may have on my iPad or iPod. And uh, that's, that's probably the true routine I have other than what I do in the batting cage and, 
on the field. During the off season, did you go to any great concerts? I didn't. You know, that was one thing. I didn't have a lot of time, and I and when I did have time, I tried to travel and try to go see family and visit with friends and stuff. You know, I didn't really see any concerts, but. Uh, if there's anybody that wants to offer me tickets to a concert that I like, then I'll take them. <laughs> we'll do that. The next thing will be uh, music recommendations, and you can share yours. People will do YouTube links to their favorite new uh, artists, things like that. Yeah, we should do that. And I like, you know, if I need to name a few, do you need me to name a few? So we can I know. That'll be our next one. That's how we get people to come back for the next This Week with Weeks. It'll be all <laughs> about music. <laughs> all right, I'll be quiet then. <laughs> Uh, Raj had a question about, uh, in your experience as a hitter, how difficult is it to hit in the Coliseum as opposed to other ballparks? Good question. Uh, Coliseum's a little different. Uh, I, I think Safeco, they can kind of say the same for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the Coliseum, it's a big, it's a big win factor also. Um, and it played a factor, you know, throughout uh, the first week. And... Um, you know, it, the, the, the true knock on it that everybody tries to have is that the ball doesn't carry. You know, a lot of guys, you get a lot of long line outs, a lot of high fly balls that you think would be home runs, uh, line drives that get held up, and vice versa. But, um, I mean, there's different aspects to every field, and uh, there's pros and cons to every field. And if this is your home field, then you, you just have to play with the dimensions and play with what you got. And uh, me playing in Oakland and in the Coliseum, you know, I, I think there's always a way to hit in any ballpark, and you just have to find that way and find what works in that ballpark, and uh, that goes for any team. I got a question kind of based on that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a natural – now, I haven't played, in, you know, very competitively in a while, but I'm a natural pull hitter, and uh, the call seems a spacious field. Uh, what do you do – like, uh, how do you – I've been trying to go more opposite way with it. What do you do? What kind of pitches do you look for? What do you do to change up your stance if you're looking to go opposite way when you have a kind of more spacious uh, feel like you do at the Coliseum? Uh, I think in the – good question because uh, that's one thing where, where I was coming up, I did – I predominantly pulled. And uh, every now and then I'd go the other way, but I was predominantly pulled when it came to my right side. <clears throat> now it's at the point where, you know, that ball you kind of get to the left center, but you don't kill it, but you get it, and it should be off the wall or be over the fence. It's, it's not happening here. So uh, I don't really change my stance. I change, uh, you know, staying more inside the ball to be sure of better contact. And when you do get that pitch away, when you stay inside the ball, you're able to go that way. Um, let the ball get a little bit deeper, you know. Now it's not about get, catching it way out in front and trying to drive it, you know, over the fence. Now it's about shorts, you know, low line drives instead of the high hit for the gaps, you know, that stuff will happen. You try to get the low line drives, hard balls on the ground, and uh, that usually produces line drives that cut through the air for home runs every now and then. And uh, what, what, like, pitches are you looking for to go with, to go opposite way with it? Are you going for, uh, I mean? It, yeah, it, dep it depends on, on the pitcher, you know. Um, a guy like Felix, you know, his away pitches are usually either a backdoor slider cutter type pitch mm -hmm. or his two seam. So that type of guy, those are the pitches you're going to look for away. When he comes in, it's going to be, you know, the, the, the change-up type pitch or he's coming with a straight fastball inside most of the time. So you got to kind of weigh your, weigh your balance on what the pitcher does. But uh, you like to really set up off the fastball on any given pitch usually. Uh, you know, when in doubt, always set up off the fastball. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. You got it. So it seems like you know quite a bit about which, I mean, of course, what the pitchers are throwing. How much time are you spending a week, Jamil, on, like, studying, uh, you know, the pitchers and, and just the overall, your approach to the game? Yeah, me, I mean, it's, it's an everyday job. So, you know, every day we're in there, and, you know, once we go to the field, there's a game. So uh, th there's something to look at on every pitcher every single day. Uh, for me, um, I probably give it about, 10, 15 minutes max. You know, I'll go in there and I'll see what his tendencies are. Um, and then when I see what his tendencies are, I'll go to what I've done against that pitcher, see what I've done against him. And then after I've seen what I've done against him, I want to know the, the intangible parts that, that affect my game. You know, what does his pickoff move look like? What does it look like when he's got a guy on first and he doesn't pick off? And what kind of things is he tipping? Is he tilting his shoulder? Is he rocking his head? Or whatever it may be. For me to get that extra edge to either get a bag 
or does he throw the curveball in the dirt a lot where if I see it and I'm on first base, I can take second? You know, different things like that. So you look at the picture for the most part, I do about 10, 15 minutes, but uh, after that it's pretty much knowing the intangibles of the game because I don't want to get too clogged up in my, in my head about what he's doing. To go along with that, somebody online wrote, who's the most intimidating pitcher you've faced? Hmm. You mentioned Felix. You mentioned Felix. And Felix is not the most intimidating, but he is very good. <laughs> but uh, honestly, in the AL West, there's, there's a lot of good pitchers. I, mean, I go up there every day, and I feel like you got to really come prepared each day in the AL West. And it doesn't matter if you're talking from Oakland, Seattle, to Texas, or the Angels. I, I think all around pitching in this league, um, it battles with any. I really believe that. And uh, – I would have to go with Justin Verlander, though, just because of his strong mix of pitches. Justin Verlander in the AL is probably the, the strongest one I've seen. I heard something to that. He lost last night for the first time since July 15th the last year. How crazy is that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's, 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 that's unbelievable, actually. I don't know if anybody's done that. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know who can battle that. Uh, but when you got what he's got and you can throw 100 going into the seventh and eighth inning, I mean, who's doing that? <laughs> Uh, somebody watching right now, Travis, uh, has a question about who's the more competitive brother, you or Ricky? Yes. See, we, we grew up under the same type of hungry teaching, so, uh, I mean, we're both competitive. I mean, you put us out there on the field, put us on the basketball court, put us anywhere, and me being the younger brother, and I think he'll let you know. I'm going to battle until the end, you know. He's going to knock me around, but I'm, I'm hanging on to his shirt. I'm ripping his shirt. Whatever it may be, you know, we're both competitive. And uh, we pride ourselves in that. That's how we were taught, you know, and that's how we were brought up. So um, a lot of things we do are alike as far as the aggressive side of the game, taking the extra base, forcing the issue, you know, maybe being a little risky here and there. I mean, you know, you can't play scared. you got to play on the aggressive side more so than the passive side. And uh, – I think it would it's give or take me or him when it comes to being competitive, but I'd like to say I am. <laughs> uh, how often do you, do you and Ricky talk, actually? Me and him talk. We talk about two, three times a week, obviously. Cool. Like, he plays in about, I checked this morning, he plays in about two hours here. Um, usually if I have a day game, we won't be able to talk. Uh, but, um, you know, he'll be playing. By the time he gets done, I'll be on the flight to Seattle. By the time I get to Seattle, he'll probably be asleep. So we catch each other about two or three times a week. And uh, even if that, we'll leave a text with each other and just keep our, you know, keep our brotherly chat going. Yeah, I'm sure he's been a huge help to you uh, for sure. Have there been any other players that are like mentors or role models to you? Um, I mean, I've been around a lot of baseball players and ever since I – well, really since growing up. But ever since I got drafted, I've been up under a lot of baseball players and uh, off-season workouts with uh, – Prince Fielder, um, uh, one of the players that's been in the game for a while, uh, Felipe Lopez, um, you know, obviously my brother being another one. Uh, Barry Larkin is a guy who lives in the city that I'm, I'm from, and, and he's helped me out a lot. Um, I, I just pick and choose, you know, different uh, details from each person, and uh, whoever feeds me something that I feel is helpful to my game, I listen, man, and uh, I think that's how you grow in this game. So I've gotten a lot of input from a lot of different sides. For sure. Um, speaking of the draft, actually, um, a really good friend of mine works for the Indians. He was an advanced scout there. So I got the, the, the big scoop on you, man. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm messing around. But so, so you, were, you were drafted in 05 by the Rockies, and then you chose to go to Miami instead, where you ended up being you know all-tournament team, all-ACC, stuff like that. So what actually went into that decision to, to forego you know, playing in the major leagues, you know, three or four years before you actually, um, you know, came in and made a bigger impact? Yeah, I, uh, I actually, in 05, I was drafted by Milwaukee. Uh, with oh, the okay. Um, yeah, but at the same time, you know, same situation. Um, you know, they, they offered me, and uh, it, was, it was at that time in that position, even though my brother had got drafted, it was still hard to turn down. Um, certain dollar figures <laughs> that were put out there, um, but uh, I like to say I'm a man of of uh, of character, and, and I and I believe in 
following dreams and following what I believe I, I want to accomplish in life. And so I, I just did a lot of praying and I did a lot of talking with my family because that, that was the toughest decision for me at that point probably um, <clears throat> to make by myself because I really looked for my parents to really put some input in for me as to what I should do. But uh, they left it up to me that whole time. I, I, just, I just sat there, man, and I kept playing throughout the summer. We kept negotiating. Um, Miami was a dream school for me. Uh, always wanted to go there. Um, I, I got to a point in the summer where I said, if they don't hit a, a certain number or something like that, I, I want to go to school. I want to be a, you know All-American. I want to see what it's like to be on the USA team. Uh, go to the College World Series, I literally, I thought of those things and I said, I really want to do that. And I, I just, what the turning point was, was at the end of the summer, um, Miami was just trying to get me there and I just said, you know, if I can't accomplish what I set out to accomplish in college, then I don't feel like my minor league career would have gone much better. So I said, let me go to college and see if I can ball out, so to speak, in college. And uh, if I do that, then I know I'll get my reward in the end of that. So that was my deciding factor. Awesome. Uh, where was your where was your favorite place to play in the minors? Are we just talking about A's affiliates, or are you talking about just anywhere, period? Yeah, anywhere, period. In the minors. Uh, I would say as far as fan base, it would be our affiliate with uh, Sacramento, with the River Cats. That was we, they were getting ten thousand fans, cold, hot, rain, whatever. Uh, other than that, as far as uh, city wise, let me think. I like Reno, Nevada. To be honest, yeah, Reno, Nevada was pretty cool. I liked it there, and they had a lot of good places to eat. So <laughs> I'm cool that's what I'm doing. So. <laughs> are, they, are they the fifty ones or are they the aces? For, I keep forgetting. Yeah, that's the, the Aces. That's who we got. Uh, when we had Brandon Allen, that's where we got him from, Colin Calgill. I played okay. against all of them in the minor leagues. Cool. Speaking of uh, traveling around playing different ballparks, uh, you've been in the majors for like 97 games last season and a couple now this year. What's your uh, favorite place to play outside of uh, Oakland? What ballpark, uh, what city do you like going to? New York's always the city you want to go to, you know. New York's got it. They got it good, man. They go out there, and the stadium is always full. It's a great place to hit. Um, and also, I mean, they, they, they keep a cook in there that's – he cooks all the uh, Latin food, and he's a Latin cook, and it's real good. Uh, <laughs> even for the visitors? Even for the visitors. They got, wow. they got the daily chef there for the visitors. So I don't know, man. I can't really turn that down. So <laughs> I have to say New York is probably the top uh, city for me. Cool. Uh, I guess we'll start to wrap this up. One last question from somebody online. Matt uh, said, what sort of personal goals have you set for yourself this season? All right. I've got, I get asked that question a lot. But uh, personal goals, I don't really put numbers out uh, for myself. I honestly don't. Uh, I really believe the sky is the limit at, any, at anything I do. Um, you know, I would love to always be, you know, a 300 hitter. I would love to always exceed that. I would love to always get, you know, those 40, 50, 60 plus bags. I would love to hit, you know, 10 home runs or more. I would love to do those things. But at the same time, I feel like anything's possible. I feel like uh, I can hit 350. I feel like I can hit 15 home runs. I feel like I can steal 60, 70 bags. Um, I feel like all of that is there for me. I feel like my defense, I can, you know, make less than three or four errors a year. I just feel that way that anything's possible. So uh, I just like to uh, pride myself on going out there each and every day and playing 100% and seeing what the numbers are at the end because every at bat, I'm trying to hit 1,000. Every time I field, I'm trying to field 1,000. I'm trying to do everything flawless. And uh, if you come short of that, hopefully it's as close to flawless as possible. Well, thank you, Jamal, and thanks all you guys for joining in and uh, asking the questions. And uh, with this first Hangout, I think it went pretty well. Looking forward to future ones. So, Thank you guys for everything. Man. Hope you all have a good one. Thank you. Okay. Thanks good for luck this season. <laughs> 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 nice. Hey, Johnny Leonard went to high school with me. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> quarterback and my center fielder. He was a quarterback? Quarterback, and he used to run like a 6-5-60. I love Johnny Leonard. Johnny Venice is my boy. Oh, man, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Cool. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, Thanks again. See ya.